In this video, let's consider rates of change as it relates to the velocity of an object. Let's first look at a simple case. This experiment, we're just dropping a ball from a roof um, of a building, which is has its height as h, as you see on the left-hand side. We just drop the ball and it falls down freely. And this is called free fall. And in this experiment, we're going to neglect any wind resistance. So the position of the ball at any time t falling directly down from the roof of the building is given by minus one-half gt squared. This is where t is the time of travel. g is the acceleration due to gravity, and it's negative because it's down. And s of t, as we mentioned before, is position, and it's dependent upon how much time the ball has been falling. So let's look at a similar but just a bit different example, and this is called projectile motion. So if you look at this gentleman who's going to be blown out of this cannon, you see that his motion as he tries to hit the tank downfield, it has a trajectory that's parabolic, so it looks like a parabola. So let's analyze some of the pieces that we might need so we might be able to generate a position function at any time t for the gentleman's flight. So first we notice that the cannon is at some initial height, and this could be anywhere, right? It could be up on top of a building or it could be down on the ground, but that definitely is something we should consider. Something else we should consider is what is the initial velocity that the gentleman is being blown out of the cannon? Then we have to remember that along his path, gravity will continue to pull him back down to Earth. And then we need to generate, as I mentioned, some function that will tell us where he is in that path. What is his position at any time t? So if we put those two pieces or three pieces together, what we get is that the position of this projectile motion is given by minus one-half gt squared. That's gravity's effect on the motion trying to pull the man back to Earth, plus v0t, which is going to help determine how far downfield he'll actually be able to reach plus the initial position, which is a factor because it depends, of course, on how high we place the cannon. That will help uh, determine how high the gentleman can actually reach in his position at any time t um, in his flight. So just to reiterate that the downfield distance that he could travel is given by v0t, and that's because we remember that distance is equal to the rate times the time. So now we have a formula that we can use if we'd like to determine the position of a particle or object that has this type of projectile motion. So let's look at some definitions now. There's a relationship between the position of a particle or object and its velocity, and that is that the velocity is a derivative of the position. Similarly, the acceleration is a derivative of the velocity, or second derivative of the position function. And then jerk is the derivative of acceleration, which turns out to be the third derivative of position, second derivative of velocity, or the first derivative of acceleration. Speed is an entity that is direction independent, and speed is the absolute value of the velocity. So let's look at an example. Suppose we want to describe the following velocity profile of this particle. So what we're looking at here is the velocity plotted um, against, uh, I'm sorry, the, the time and the velocity. So the y is the velocity and the x is the time. So what we see is that the velocity here is going downward from 0 to 1. Um, and so if we go on the time t from 0 to 1, then we see that the velocity goes from 0 to minus 1. So this object is speeding up, but it's traveling backwards because its velocity is negative. Now, on this range between 1 and 2, we see that the velocity is constant, but it's still traveling backwards because the velocity is still stuck at negative 1. Now the velocity is decreasing because it's gone from minus 1 and it's working its way back to 0 and the object is still traveling backwards. In the range between 3 and 5 seconds, we see that the velocity is 0, which means that the object is stationary. And then from 5 up to 6, or 7 it looks as so, the velocity is increasing, and it's gone from being stationary, but the velocity is positive, so that means that the speed is in the forward direction. 